So, what if you're given a line on a graph and asked to determine the slope of that line? Well, to make it just like our previous examples, we'll want to make a right triangle showing the rise and the run of the line. So, how do we start that? Well, first, identify two points on the line that are easy to read. That is, they should cross through intersections on the grid, if at all possible. Just something that we can read fairly easily off the graph. Here's a good example point, right on the intersection of grid lines, so it will be easy to read. And here's another one again on grid lines. And if we look further, here's one more. Now, technically, it doesn't matter which two points you choose. That is, if you're able to read each point perfectly, it would end up with the exact same slope no matter what two points you chose. That is, it's a line, so the slope doesn't change. Given that, sometimes it's not always easy to read those points exactly off a graph. So if you have multiple good points to choose from, always choose two points that are farthest away from each other, and this will help reduce the overall error. Now, once we have our two points, we can draw in our triangle, that is, our run, and then our rise. And now it's time to pull out the definition of our slope. Again, slope equals rise over run. And to keep things from being confusing, we'll consider the run to be positive to the right. So we only have to consider the sign of the rise. In this case, the rise is going up, so we know it will be positive. We look at the y values, and we note that it rises from negative 2 up to plus 5. Or we could just count the blocks. 2 to get us up to the x-axis, and then another 5 to get us up to our point, for a total of 7. Or, it's worth noting that we could just subtract our y values. So we went from negative 2 up to plus 5, so we'll take our second point y value, that is plus 5, and subtract our first point y value, negative 2. And we'll put in brackets just to keep track of them. For the run, we could also count blocks, going from negative 4 to plus 5 for a total of 9. Or again, worth noting, we could take our second point's x value, plus 5, and subtract our first point's x value, negative 4. And again, brackets to keep track. So for each of them, let's first get rid of the brackets to simplify it, and we get a slope of 7 over 9. Now this one we can't reduce at all, so that will be our final answer. Does that make sense? Let's try another. So first, remember, we identify points on the line that are easy to read. Again, they should cross through intersections on our grid, if at all possible. Here's a good point, right on the intersection of grid lines. And this one will be easy to read. And here's another. In this case, we see that there are only two good points, so we'll go with those. Once we have our points, we can draw our triangle our run, positive to the right, and then our rise, which in this case we're dropping, so we head down. Now we pull out our definition of slope, rise over run. We look at our y values. It rises from plus 2 to negative 3, which is really a drop. We could count the blocks, negative 2 to get us through the x-axis, and another 3 to our point, or just subtract the y values. So, negative 3 minus plus 2. For the run, we could also count our blocks or subtract the x values. Going from negative 1 to plus 3, we could determine the run as plus 3 minus negative 1. And it's time to get rid of brackets to simplify it and we end up with a slope, and we can't reduce this at all, so that will be our final answer. And a negative, as expected, it drops to the right. In this tutorial, we looked at reading the slope of a line from its graph. 
And to do this, we found that we first of all find points where the location of the line is easy to read, that is, where a grid intersection is crossing. Now we need at least two points, and if we have more than two points, we would try and pick the two that are furthest apart to reduce error. Second, once we have our points marked, we can draw in our triangle, an arrow to the right to show our run, and an arrow going either up or down showing the rise from the first point to the second point. At this point, we can determine the rise either by counting the blocks or by subtracting the y's, the y of the second point minus the y of the first point. In much the same way, we would determine the run, again by counting blocks or by subtracting the x values, that is the x of the second point minus the x of the first point. And finally, we represent the ratio of the rise and run as a division or fraction, and then reduce if possible.